Welcome back from this coffee break, and I hope you managed to get some rest or at least some coffee in you. As we now swiftly proceed to our next topic. Now, the next topic will focus more on how companies can use data science and machine learning in order to speed up digital transformations and increase profit. So, it will be given by Darko Marjanovic, the co founder and CEO of the Think Solver company. Which, or whose main focus is on big data technologies and data sciences. So please give a round of applause for our next speaker. Thank you. Just to see. Hello, everyone. Just again, my name is Darko Marjanovic. I'm a CEO and co-founder of ThingSolver. Also, I'm a co-founder and board member of Data Science Serbia. So community here in Serbia where we organize a lot of meetups and spreading the word about data science. A uh, few words about Things Solver. A lot of people know us, know our company, but ju just to mention, uh, we're a young company. We exist only three and a half years, and our focus is data. We love to work with the data, and uh, all people are in team are data scientists or data engineers. So focus on the data, data science, uh, big data, machine learning, not that much on traditional technologies, but the new one. And how we, we are trying to help companies, our clients, to um, make benefits from uh, data science and uh, data itself. So that's one thing I'll talk about today. Uh, also, uh, we built a platform that help companies uh, to increase profit and increase sales and to have better marketing. We call it Kios, it's pronounced Kios, uh, by the uh, Greek titan of wisdom. So over the, these three years, we figure out what is important to our clients, what models, uh, what processes, and we put that all in one platform. And that's something that we implement to our clients. So we put a couple algorithms, more technical people know, recommendation system, propensity to purchase, customer lifetime value, segmentation based on machine learning, uh, churn detection, uh, and a lot more. A lot more will come. And all is oriented to the customer. Actually, not our customer, but customers of our, or our clients. So the first question is why? Why data science? why we should work with the data, why we should apply machine learning models, why we should collect the data. So some things that I believe, and we in Things Oliver believe, believes, uh, that is matter to companies are uh, brand, brand awareness. Companies want to increase their brand awareness. They want to have strong brand and to uh, keep the name and the brand uh, as much as possible good. So maybe the data science can help us with that. We'll see. Customer satisfaction. Uh, it's very, very, very important topic. We'll also today present uh, one case that we work with the Weep Mobile. We about it's about customer satisfaction. But I think uh, when you have satisfied customer. That means they come more to you, they're spending more money with you, and of course your profit is increasing. So it's important to try to use the data in order to increase customer satisfaction. Okay, also to have some insights. Uh, maybe you want to build the new products. Maybe you want to change something. Maybe you want to know better your audience. You want to know everything from your data in order to do your business better. So I believe also the data, data science and machine learning can help companies in this topic. And important thing always is money. The companies want to earn more money, increase profits. So that's obvious result. The result should be after applying some machine learning models, some data science, some basically data-driven processes. So if you have these results, the clients and the customers will be uh, really happy. You know, it's, it's a natural thing. So 
Uh, I don't want to talk empty stories. I want to present a real use case that we're working here in Serbia because I think uh, uh, spreading the word about data science uh, is best way is to show the real cases, not to copy some from other countries, but for Serbia, Serbian cases for other countries, the, uh, the cases that are done there. So uh, you probably know about Planeta Sport. He's probably our largest uh, shoes retailer, sport retailer. And uh, we met them on this conference, I think, two years ago. And there was interesting about data, data science, and how, how that can help them uh, to, to know, know more about customers and everything. So we want to help them. And this was a very interesting project from the beginning because this was something also new to us because we work a lot of in telco and uh, banking, but uh, we didn't have a retail, a retail uh, a customer. But we read a, a lot about that. And we start together with them. And uh, they want to go step by step to learn more about data science and uh, Actually, one amazing client that is dedicated uh, into digital transformation and uh, in implementing the data science. So, uh, we always start our projects, and that I think is very important, by the questions. Uh, if you listen yesterday, someone probably mentioned the crisp dam or uh, this new diamond process where you start with the business problem and you always, every, every this uh, model starts with the business problem. That's what we call question. If client have question, we can help, we can help him, we can help our clients if they know what to answer. It's really good, always good to have a lot of questions. Some, someone will be solved by uh, doing some exploratory analysis, some bit of machine learning, but this is, I think, a very, very important step. And uh, clients cannot expect from the data scientists, actually business cannot expect from the data scientists to solve their problem if they don't know what is their problem. So we really believe that uh, the, the real data science project should start, should start with this. So when we come to Planeta Sport, their first question and the most important question was, who is my customer? Uh, yeah, simple question, who is my customer? But do you think it's a simple question? Who think it's a simple question? No? Who think it's a hard question? And the rest? <laughs> yeah. So you want to know almost everything about your customer. It's a little bit creepy, but it's uh, realistic, uh, but uh, it's very hard to define who is really my customer, who is my group of customers, and Planet Sport have the question, who is my customer? So we try to help them. But we also want to not be this guy in the picture. So we care about GDPR and the privacy, so I think it's a very important aspect. We do all the steps in order not to break any customer privacy, to do not something that is not even ethical. So to be, let's say, honest and to maximize uh, results from the data that are not, uh, not, not so personal to plant. Uh, we we were we was focused more on behavior of the customer not maybe that much uh, gender or maybe maybe uh, something something like that but more what our what the customer is doing or how it's behave and how we can use that later so obviously we need need the data and uh, uh, planeta sports uh, give us the access to the data from their post terminals, ERP, and there are some marketing uh, inputs and everything. And also, what is very important in these days is online. Because if you mix online behavior and offline behavior, if you are possible to do that, then you have 
some will say customer 360 or I don't know the fancy names and everything but uh, this is the, the data sources that uh, define our define the customer define uh, his behavior so we put the uh, put the online data put the offline data in one bucket and start start working we uh, obviously do first exploratory analysis and see if there is the material to work on, on the next steps to apply some machine learning some other algorithms so we implement some of them like uh, segmentation which is very important uh, some companies like to skip that but I think it's very important to try maybe to challenge the old segmentations with that are done manually or maybe by some uh, expertise and try machine learning let's try what will machine say about our group of customers and then you can challenge the, these two and make a benefit uh, from that uh, it seems uh, easy but customer lifetime value is very popular among our clients it's not easy to do that there is a lot of algorithms but you must uh, explain to business what that mean and to also challenge their old uh, way of work also there is a profiling like uh, uh, I don't know when is buying customer when is I don't know uh, how much is spending etc uh, we do a lot of scoring like propensity to purchase some churn scoring etc and some behavior scoring and other things that uh, that we came up by ourselves there is also some uh, triangle analysis I believe our colleagues Trahinya will some someday wrote a blog post about that because I think it's very interesting to to share to people what we find out and what is important uh, uh, when you're doing the data analysis so th that was the first question we had the data we do a lot of uh, data science machine machine learning hard work uh, data cleaning that's always the, the problem and uh, naturally next question is how we can boost campaign increase conversion rates okay we know who is our customer that's the the first the basement and next steps we can do a lot of more but uh, this one is very very interesting because we got the very good results and I can share you today what are that results so what we done uh, our team our brilliant data scientist was focused on a recommendation system so let's try to maybe beat Amazon or Netflix and do, do the good job and also we had this customer profiling so we had a lot of information about customer behavior and uh, the most maybe important thing is domain expertise so the Planeta Sports have great experts they understand their business and in these two years they start understanding very well the data science and the process and what they can get from that and we can work together in order to increase conversion rates so our answer was a recommendation system and we move a step ahead in order to do personalized campaigns and etc so we want to achieve that to for every customer to get in on time when he needed some offer some discount not maybe always discount we showed that sometimes this discount is not necessary very interesting thing we uh, experiment a lot a lot with uh, these campaigns and obviously most important thing are results so probably I will not speak about this topic today uh, uh, because Planeta Sport is super happy with the results so they said you can you can show the show results and to share other people so we answered the first question who is our customer we know does it he loyal or maybe not is he maybe champion or something like that what uh, brand he likes he likes maybe rank Nike Adidas and whatever uh, what is his customer lifetime value 
Um, maybe he's liked running because he's buying running shoes. Or this, is he an uh, online buyer? Maybe he is more, more interested to buy online, but not offline. And uh, a bit of machine learning. Uh, what, uh, which chance of 78% we'll buy next month. So we want to predict uh, steps of the customers in the future. So we do a lot of propensity to purchase scoring in order to understand when will customer buy something. That's very good because business can decide after that. Uh, we'll send the, that customer some campaign or not. Maybe you don't want to spam him or something like that. Send him a lot of messages. He won't just buy next month. He don't have money, or maybe he's buying um, shoes every two months or something like that. And uh, there is a lot more things, but that we work on uh, this customer profile. So you have all all about your customer in one place, so you can make uh, easier decisions. And uh, campaigns conversion rates. So we managed in last six months, I think something like that, to increase conversion rates of campaigns by average by uh, 30 30 percent. So this is a very big number. I believe we can do we can do more, but uh, this is a very very good jump from some uh, some way how the planet do campaigns and now. And this is not uh, yet, let's say, fully in production. We tested it a lot. We played with uh, different texts, uh, with uh, different pictures, and see how the customers are responding. So I believe we'll uh, achieve more percentage of uh, uh, conversions rates. So this is a very interesting result, what you can do with uh, data science. You probably can calculate if more people are buying there, that's more money for the company. So I am, I'm truly happy about these results. I believe the planet the sport is also happy. So. And we don't want to stop there. We are investing a lot of time to do new things, to try new algorithm, to see other ways how we can use the data, uh, maybe to have better uh, accuracy for some algorithms, maybe to try some new algorithms, uh, not maybe to uh, predict when the customer should customer buy next month, but maybe how many days will pass from today when the customer will make transaction or buy, buy something. So we want to go one step further and uh, we are implementing a lot of uh, interesting use cases in uh, our platform. So we are work heavily to do, do more with the data because there is a lot of a uh, lot of data in every industry and uh, i think uh, there is a lot of low hanging fruits you can you can do uh, and help company to save money or to earn more money so uh, it's not always necessary to pump uh, uh, external data or s similar but you should start with your internal data and to monetize as much as possible uh, in-house. Then you can move to the next steps and bring, I don't know, social networks or, or something else. So I think it's very important to be, uh, let's these days modern, uh, let's be agile about data science projects and do step by step, do iterations and uh, try to achieve achieve more. So that's everything I want to present today. So I leave a little bit more minutes for questions uh, questions from your side. Thank you, Doc. Just for one second, mm -hmm. I would also like to remind you all to use the link. So dsc.network forward slash capital Q capital A forward slash Tesla with a capital T. Let's now go into our questions. So the first question is, uh, what models did you use? Neural networks or others? <laughs> uh, we didn't use neural networks for this case. 
Uh, it's basically a random forest and, uh, I don't know, some k-means and other. I truly believe you should start with the simple models, and if they doesn't work, you should try something more complex. And how did you collect the data? Uh, we get the data from the, our customers from Planeta Sport. We work, work with them heavily into, with integration and also uh, anonymization in some parts, so they, we work together mm -hmm. to get the data. But the majority is actually the customer that, that gathers the data and then you process it. Yeah. 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 But it, you can do that in the, on a customer environment or in somewhere in the cloud. So somewhere the, where it is uh, secured, basically. Yeah. Uh, GDPR? GDPR. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what is the vo speaking of data, what is the volume of the data you work with? How many users, how many websites? Uh, I cannot tell how many users. That's something... Planeta can answer, and about volume, I'm not sure, but I could say that this is not a big data problem, so just um, some normal size of data. Okay. Uh, is Coyos only for retail? Uh, no, uh, it's for every possible retail, every possible marketing action, so not only for traditional retails, also work in the banking, uh, in the telco, and I don't know, whenever, wherever you have something to sell or some marketing uh, optimization to do. And uh, have you done any event-based personalized campaigns? And mm. uh, if yes, what was their response? Which type of events? Not, not yet, but we have plans. Thank you. So have you worked with demand forecasting machine learning methods? Uh, we work a lot of forecasting, but not uh, demand forecasting. So we work forecasting for other industry, you know, like for telco and yeah, mainly now for telco, but something that we plan to add to the queues. Nice. So from which platform did the data come from? Uh, did you clients use Google Analytics? Or an Google or Analytics uh, and also traditional uh, ERP systems. So I don't really know what are behind. We create a robust architecture, so they're sending, sending us data. We don't need to know uh, what exactly is behind. So. When we talk about data, metrics are also quite important. So which marketing metrics did you use? Uh, the, in this moment, the most important is uh, these conversion rates, because uh, we want to increase the conversion rates. That's for now. And probably we'll set up a lot of KPIs uh, in time to come in the future because we've done a lot of new things and we need to measure measure results thank you and considering you've been doing these projects for now let's say three plus years so what are the greatest challenges you encountered in machine learning projects in uh it's as i mentioned it's important to start with the question with the business problem and to involve the business people from the beginning because they're probably be the users after after project is finished, so they must understand. They must uh, at least believe uh, in uh, machine learning and the data science. So I think the, that's the biggest challenge because it's everything is new. You must educate a lot of people, and that's why we have data science conference and data science meetup. So, and I really think that uh, uh, here in Serbia, it's very good to have data science project because uh, people start to understand very well. Thank you. So when talking about customer lifetime value, you gave results for all planet support customers uh, or there was some segmentation for calculating such values? Uh, we have segmentation and customer lifetime value is do done for all customers mm -hmm. uh, in the different time uh, intervals. So for next month for because we want to predict how much customer will be valuable in the future, not only now. So that's the, the main idea. Thank you. And what are your recommendations on powering data for recommendation system when the data is not sufficient enough? Um, we have that problems with the cold start, but uh, Strahinja can talk about that on some meetup. I'm not, not anymore really deep in technical <laughs> details anymore. So. We can organize a meetup with Strahinja to explain recommender system and what we are doing with them. Thank you. And getting back a bit on to you and your, your history, so 
is it hard to be a CEO at <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, but it's a very good challenge, and I'm enjoying it. So it's very, very interesting to be CEO of the, I don't know, maybe we're a data company, but company that works with the data a lot. So. We always get to the growing field, let's say. <laughs> so uh, going back to the metrics, you mentioned conversion rate a lot. Why are you using conversion rate and not return on investment? Because that's also something that can be looked uh, at. Yeah, but... The Planeta Sport, in this case, want to increase conversion rates. That's we are focused on. So the next uh, probably will be the profits and uh, money. But it seems they are happy. They are paying us. So <laughs> probably they earn more money. <laughs> Talking about good metrics to have. So um, going back also on. So it's basically going back to the business question of the day, what the customer actually wants, right? Yeah. And also, what happens in a situation where the customer does, has something in mind that isn't exactly that achievable, let's say? Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with those types of situations? Yeah. How do you go we about? usually start to work with some, let's say it's POC, and the customer give us data, and we see what they have, and maybe we have some ideas if, the, if we work in the similar industry. And then we talk, and if they don't have ideas, maybe we can help them to articulate questions but if they don't have question at all or don't believe the project is um, probably will be failed we don't have that situation yet <laughs> i hope we'll never have and uh, a final question for you as a company that deals a lot with data how are you making sure that your company is gdpr compliant as well how, what what are your, some, some of your procedures and structures in place with GDPR compliance? Yeah. Uh, probably they'll be talk about GDPR more. We work with some legal people. And also, because we work a lot of, with uh, Austria and Slovenia, uh, we follow their rules and create some uh, policies in our, our, in, in our company uh, that match to GDPR. So. We are, let's say, GDPR compliant, even if in Serbia GDPR is not yet present formally. Okay, uh, thank you. This would now conclude our talk. I would like to thank Tarko once again to, for giving us his talk, so please give him a round of applause whilst I go for the certificate. <laughs>